All right, today we're going to be talking about the future of Hazel, my game engine. So I like to make these videos around once a year or so, just to kind of touch base with you guys. This feels like a corporate meeting. It feels like a one-on-one, -on -one, like when I'm evaluating Peter's performance. Speaking of which, it's almost time for his performance review. I think it's a good idea to periodically ask yourself, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what are your current goals? What are you working towards? What is actively happening right now? But then also, what are the plans for the future? And so, bam, here we have an entire Milanote board that I've made that is designed to answer those questions as well as provide a little bit more information as to our development processes for Hazel. So we're gonna get right down to business in this video and we're gonna talk about, first of all, what we're currently working on as a team, which I've kind of set up these four boards for, but then also what we're going to be working on soon because there's a bunch of exciting stuff here. Actually, I've thought of one exciting thing that I forgot to even mention here, but there's lots of exciting stuff happening. Okay, so first of all, let me introduce you to this Milanote board because I had a blast setting this up. And by the way, this video is sponsored by Milanote. So we're going to talk about them later in the video. But I'm really glad that I finally had the opportunity to create something like this because I think this is going to answer so many questions and keep you guys so much more informed with what we're doing. So have, first of all, how do you get to this? Hazelengine.com slash roadmap is the link. I'll have it over here. If you just open that page, it will redirect you to this Milanote page that I've made. And I believe you guys can actually leave comments as well if you're curious about certain things. So first of all, Control Shift D uh, flips between light and dark theme. I kind of like both, to be honest. Uh, you can see I, I drew this beautiful uh, kind of background for the Hazel logo since it was state light. Anyway, we're getting a little distracted. So these two boards here are just kind of information boards. If you double click on them, you can go into them. And so here we have the team, for example. I showed this actually in a recent video, which I'll have linked over there if you wanna take a look. But there'll be like a chapter there called team where I actually talk about the team in a bit more depth. But this is the currently active Hazel core team. Uh, if we go back, there's also this kind of branch strategy that we have. So this is a great example of something that I feel like I have to mention every single time that I talk about Hazel in a devlog and I'm like, the dev branch. Oh, by the way, the dev branch is the branch that we I don't need to do that anymore. You guys can just look at this. Um, and in fact, I think I can even export this, uh, you know, as an image or something and have it maybe on the Hazel website so it doesn't even have to be in Milanote. But anyway, feel free to have a read of that. There's also this section here with what we're currently working on. So if we take a look at this new C Sharp scripting engine, we've got the owner of each feature fix that real quick. And then Peter's gone through this and just filled in some information about what Hazel's new C Sharp scripting engine is. And one thing that I really like about the way that Peter's decided to do this is he kind of wrote this as a story, which I didn't ask him to do that, but he did that. And I think that's great because I feel like that's just really cool to have a little bit of history and story as to how this feature came about and potentially how it used to work in the past and why we've made some of the tactical decisions that we've made. This is almost like a little bit of a blog and I feel like you could you could definitely convert pages here into a blog, but I just think it's really nice to have it visually laid out like this. Okay, so this is the section that we're gonna focus on today. The what we're going to be working on in brackets soon because we have more plans. And in fact, this isn't everything that we've planned. We've got more, more than just this planned, but these were the things that were on my mind for the not too distant future. So these are things that I have already started thinking about and even in some cases have partially implemented. So let's kind of go through all of these. Before we do jump into this section though, I have to thank Milanote for making this amazing visual project organization tool and also for sponsoring this video. So Milanote is a tool for organizing creative projects. And I think just by looking at it, you can probably see that its strong suit is the fact that you can organize it however you like. To me, it feels like the closest thing to grabbing like a piece of paper and then just writing stuff down, drawing arrows, drawing little sketches, like laying out this kind of information and organizing it in really whatever way you can imagine. So over here, you have this kind of toolbar. I've customized this toolbar to have more of the features that I actually use, but there's even some additional features down here. And it's really as simple as just dragging them out and then you know building whatever whatever you want these things over here are boards they're basically like sub pages you can drag out one of these and then if we hop on over here another great feature is that you can choose a template to start with so for example when I was making this hazel board I started with this technical architecture template which you can see I took some inspiration from like these headings and these lines all of these arrows and boards that's kind of the same layout that I 
ended up going with. If we go into something with a bit more information, you can see that it's quite nice for just displaying quite a lot of information, but then visually spreading it out, visually organizing it in a little bit more of a fluid way. But then also it's great for visual stuff like this. Like, you know, I need to draw this little diagram. You just grab a bunch of these note blocks. You can connect them with arrows just by right clicking, connect with lines, give this line like an arrow ahead, two arrow heads, whatever. And you've got a diagram like this going really quickly. But then you can also just draw. Like I can just draw. I had my Wacom tablet like hooked up and I was just drawing stuff like this. And then also the sharing, like you can just hit share up here and then create a read only link like with one click and share it with anyone. I'm in an incognito tab here, I'm just opening it up. And then here you go, it's, it's loaded my, my page, which is how I'm easily able to share this with you guys. And then of course I can invite collaborators. So Peter, for example, he's the one who made this C Sharp page, as I mentioned earlier. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit excited with all these features. So let me just tell you that Milanote is available for free with no time limit or anything like that. Just go to my link in the description below and try it out for your next creative project. And if you are already using Milanote, let me know down in the comment section below how you've been finding it. Huge thank you to Milanote for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's start with the GPU particle system. So Hazel at the moment doesn't have any kind of particle system. In past games that we've made for game jams, such as Forest, Dichotomy, and Saving Captain Chino, those games have all actually had some form of visual particle system. But the thing is that was all entirely written by me in C Sharp, like in the scripting language, just during the game jam. It's not that hard. In fact, I even have a video where I made a particle system in an hour, not in any game engine. I'll have the video linked up there. But the problem is it's not like a real particle system because in that kind of C Sharp particle system, every little particle is an entity in the scene that comes with all of that overhead. It has to be managed by like a particle manager system that I've written as well. And it's obviously lacking any kind Kind of real authoring features. Everything about the particle's behavior is basically controlled through C Sharp. There's no dedicated like UI in the editor. But aside from that, the performance overhead means that you can't have like hundreds of thousands of particles or even millions of particles being all kind of simulated and bouncing off the floor or anything like that. So in comes this kind of proper GPU particle system. Now I'm going to try and be reasonably brief in this video because each one of these features is huge and can definitely be talked about in their own video. Videos. So if you want me to make dedicated videos for some of these features, let me know in the comment section below. You can see I've even included videos here of like work in progress. So this was uh, me playing around with particles. You can see I've created what looks like a fire or something. This is in a completely standalone Vulkan application as well. So this isn't using Hazel's renderer, which is why we don't have Bloom or anything like that here. But we have a bunch of particle controls. We have a graph, we have a color over lifetime as well with this slider. And you can see as well, we've got this depth buffer collision where all of these particles that by the way, are being entirely simulated and drawn on the GPUs. So there's very, very little CPU input. The CPU just tells it these parameters basically, and that's it. All of the emission, simulation, sorting, physics, you know, even the kind of draw commands because it's using indirect drawing, that's all entirely based on the GPU. There are still some features missing, but we are planning to hopefully allocate some time to work to this. I mean, I'll be working on this. So, so it's really just about me finding the time to do this, but I would love to get this in for our first release next year. So that's that. Then we have a, a bit more of a boring one. Hazel Editor 2.0. I'm probably not going to talk too much about this because this is actually a little bit boring. I think I think it's boring to talk about, but it's I don't think it's boring to do. Like I'm actually really looking forward to doing this, mostly because of the benefits. But the biggest takeaway here is just the undo redo system. Uh, this will enable us to have a nice proper undo redo system, which I think is going to be quite beneficial for productivity. Uh, so yeah, it's just a matter of, again, finding the time for that. But I do want that planned for 2024.1. You can see, by the way, that because this is also planned for 2024.1, that is shaping up to be a big release. And now that we have automation, uh, you know, working, it's really good timing, I think, because this is going to be hard to test. Not to mention that this is gonna let us have automation for the editor, because we don't have that at the moment. We've only got automation for, well, really full like CI automation just for building the engine. But we have an automated test runner that runs like Hazel's runtime and plays like a whole bunch of scenes, which test pretty much every feature. So we've got that, but that's like the runtime. That's actually running Hazel's scenes and making sure the engine like doesn't crash and produces the expected results. That's not testing the tools, which is this huge level editor. And that's obviously very important to test. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, 
Real-time global elimination. I think this is, uh, yeah, the hottest feature in town, as I mentioned here. Uh, this definitely deserves its own video. It's, I, I think it's a very important feature and I, I have some nice, almost spin-off features as well and a pretty solid strategy, I think at least on paper, as to how I want to implement this. This is quite early. I haven't started working on this within Hazel at all yet, uh, which is why I've kind of put this down for maybe the second half of next year, or I don't know what our release scheduling is gonna be like, but I've put that down for maybe around our second release next year. But yes, this is gonna be a huge feature and we're definitely gonna be using this in the first commercial game that we make with Hazel. And then finally, I've got path tracing and cinematic tools here. Uh, so this I did actually start working on last year. Around the time that I started the ray tracing series, in fact, people who have watched like the first episode of the ray tracing series, you may have seen a little clip of ray tracing working inside Hazel. That's what this was. So I'm finally kind of making this information public. These three videos I recorded and shared with the team internally in June last year. So like a year and a quarter later, they're seeing the public light. I wanna do a lot more of this sharing uh, with you guys, which is one of the reasons why I set up this Melanote page, just because I think it's really nice to share everything in a nice, you know, visual organized way. But if we take a look at some of these videos, so this was, yeah, back when we made Forest, uh, you know, I put this in, this entire scene gets created as an acceleration structure in Vulcan. This is all Vulcan ray tracing, by the way. So it's all using RTX cores. It's hardware accelerated. And uh, yeah, this didn't have uh, any kind of accumulation yet. So that's why it's very noisy but you can see this is, and it didn't have textures yet either, but this is the entire scene for Forest, so that was really cool to see. And especially I think inside the buildings where you can see that there's some bounce lighting happening. I, this may have even been just one bounce. I don't know, this was very early. Then I hooked up some of Hazel's control, so you can see this is the directional light component that we have within Hazel, working with this in the path traced mode. Again, without accumulation, but you can still see the reflection of this light basically, the light bouncing off of this surface and then hitting these other surfaces indirectly. And then we have uh, accumulation, which is, I think the last video I ended up recording back then last year, but this you can see when I stop moving the camera, I don't know how well this is, probably gonna look terrible. You can look at these videos on the Milanote uh, page, obviously, because I'm realizing now that not only is this, you know, a compressed video, I'm recording this in another YouTube video and then you're watching it through that. So it's gonna be even worse quality, but this is quite nice you know, accumulation when it when it stops. And you can see it's all like within Hazel. This is not a standalone app, this is not an experiment. This is me integrating it directly into Hazel. So I still call it experimentation just because it's not a fully specced, fully designed solid feature yet, but it's definitely a good proof of concept. Now the second part of this though is the cinematic tools because I don't wanna to talk too much about the first commercial title that we're gonna be working on, but it's a story-driven game. And to me, the way that I want to present some of this story is via cutscenes. I want to have nicely animated cinematic cutscenes that tell certain parts of this story, and that requires cinematic tools. I've grouped it with path tracing for this because I imagine I'll be working on this feature at the same time, but of course they don't have to be used together. You can use cinematic tools to have rendering using rasterization for your cinematics, but I also thought it would be really cool to have the ability to create path traced cinematics and then even export them so that you don't even have to do this for games, but think of it almost like a mini version of Blender. And then once we have, you know, denoising and post-processing hooked up everywhere, I think Hazel will really be able to produce some really good looking imagery. So that's the longer term plan for this. And I also want to use this with light maps, which I talk about in the real time GI as well, because that's gonna be part of uh, my idea for that feature. But that is, uh, you know, the future plan for Hazel in terms of these four features that they're all under me at the moment because I have strong visions for them and you'll notice that three out of the four of them are rendering related and I am the only rendering engineer on the team at the moment so it obviously makes sense for me to work on this but it's going to be all about finding the time to, you know, spend on this. So I don't know, I really need to find myself a video editor. So hazelengine.com slash roadmap is 
this. Link will be in the description below. Have a read of all of this information. We'll be updating this as well. I think this is gonna act as the central hub of transparency and really the bridge of sharing information from the team and what we're doing and what we're planning on doing and how the team works and all of that with all of you. So definitely check back on this page often if you wanna see what we're doing. If you wanna support Hazel, you can go to patreon.com slash the churner. You'll get access to the engine instantly and you'll be able to play with it and check out the development of some of these features for yourselves. In fact, the stuff that we are working on, like this C Sharp scripting engine, this is on a branch that is available to you if you have access to the Hazel repository. So I just wanna be clear that access to Hazel doesn't mean you get access to just the release branch or something like that. You get access to all of the development branches. Everything the Hazel team has access to you have access to. So you can take a look at some of these early in development features as they're being developed. And finally, check out Milanote. Give it a go next time you have to organize a creative project. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.